This is Covering the Spread, part of the FanDuel Podcast Network. What a fantastic sports weekend we just endured. You had Xander Shoffley finally winning his first major, hopefully catching some tickets for those of you out there, along with my own. Uh, we had a fight during the NASCAR All-Star race last night, a couple of game sevens in the NBA. So really fun week. And because of that week, with all that was going on, didn't get to break down the NFL schedule release. Now, a lot of that's been said and done, and it's not a huge takeaway to be had. But I think the bigger takeaway from the NFL schedule is it tells us now when to bet teams. Because just as important as knowing which teams to bet is knowing when to bet them, a.k.a. Does a team have a tough schedule to start, allowing us to buy into futures markets during the year? That's important to know. So what we're going to do today is take a look at the schedule as far as winners and losers, because there are some slight tweaks based on the schedule itself, based on bye weeks and stuff like that. But then more importantly, we're going to identify seven teams with either early or difficult early season schedules to identify, should we bet them now or should we wait? We'll identify what that means, why that's the case, and more here today. Welcome on into Covering the Spread. That's right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and FanDuel Research. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a managing editor of digital media for FanDuel Research, here to break down key takeaways from the NFL schedule release, letting you know which teams could start the year off hot and which ones could struggle, allowing us to potentially buy low on them later on in the fall. But first, a reminder to make sure you're subscribed to the Covering the Spread podcast feed wherever you get your podcast. Big week here on the show because tomorrow Tom Vecchio will join us to preview the, N- the NBA Conference Finals, talking about my wolves still in contention somehow. Uh, well, that should be a lot of fun. Tom with us to break down those series and the opening games tomorrow here on the show. Wednesday, we're going to talk about the best day in motorsports with Nick Giffen, Dr. Nick Giffen of the Action Network, talking Indy 500, Coke 600. I'll talk some Monaco Grand Prix as well, and a lot more stuff to come later on this week. To get those shows as they are posted, make sure you are subscribed to the Covering the Spread podcast feed wherever you get your podcasts. And if you like what you hear, leave us a five-star rating and review as well. And of course, all these shows on the FanDuel YouTube page and FanDuel TV Plus. Speaking of the NBA Conference Finals, they are here, and you can get in on the action with FanDuel. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $150 using player props, money lines, totals, and so much more. Plus, you'll get paid instantly when you win. So don't wait. Download FanDuel, an official sports betting partner of the NBA. Must be 21 plus or 18 plus in DC and present in select states. FanDuel is offering online sports wagering in Kansas under an agreement with Kansas Star Casino LLC. Gambling problem? Call 1-800 Gambler or visit FanDuel.com slash RG in Colorado, DC, Illinois, Iowa, Kentucky, Michigan, New Jersey, North Carolina, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Tennessee, Vermont, and Virginia. Call 1-800 Next Step. Or text next step to 53342 in Arizona, 1 789 7777, or visit ccpg.org slash chat in Connecticut, 1 809 with it in Indiana, 1 800 522 4700, visit chaosgamblinghealth.com in Kansas, 1 770 stop in Louisiana, visit MD Gambling Health at Oregon, Maryland, 1 800 gambler.net in West Virginia, 1 800 522 4700 in Wyoming. Hope is here. Visit gamblinghelplinema.org or call 800-327-5050 for 24-7 support in Massachusetts or call 1-877-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY in New York. Let's start things off here by talking about the NFL schedule takeaways. We already knew who was facing whom and where and stuff like that, but there were some tweaks, and I would say minor tweaks, based on when the bye weeks fell and stuff like that. Now, I think the biggest takeaway is that there weren't a lot of takeaways because no team gained more than .09 wins in my win total model based on exclusively what we learned last week on Wednesday. No team lost more than .07. So don't freak out much. Most of the schedule was already known. It does still matter because every edge is important, but no massive, massive tweaks. 
did still want to breeze through the teams that gained or lost the most based on the schedule. Gainers were the Packers at plus 0.09 wins, the Jets at plus 0.08, and the Patriots at plus 0.08 as well. So that's the number of wins they gained in my win total model based on just the schedule. Packers, uh, they're up to 10.1 wins for me. Their win total is 9.5, over is minus 134. So I think the market's valuing them pretty properly. So I'm not going to bet them, but you know, it does keep me from betting the Lions, which is important because I love the Lions. My numbers like them a lot, but high in the Packers too. We'll have more on them in the second section, I believe as well. Actually, they are not on that list, but Packers are a team that could get off to a pretty good start. Uh, so I think that if you want to buy into the Packers, if you are if you like them for this year, I would do so early because they're early in the schedule. Not too bad. Jets gain 0.08. Uh, we'll talk more about them later on too. I still like the under here, but it did boost them a bit. And finally, the Patriots, like, they deserve this because they have the toughest schedule in the league right now. So getting a slight consolation is helpful. I'd have them at 6.5 wins based on just their power rating. But when you factor in the schedule, they're down to 5.7. So over 5.5 plus 116, they're a better team than what their win total says. But I understand why they're there because of the schedule they'll face. So... They did get a bit of a consolation by uh, their schedule, but still not necessarily the best there. The losers, as far as teams that got knocked down based on the schedule, were the Bears at negative 0.07 wins, the 49ers at negative 0.06, and the Panthers at negative 0.05. The Bears lose a home game. They're also facing Green Bay as Green Bay comes off a bye, which is a tough spot. I have them at 8.1 wins. They're plus 122 to go under 8.5. Don't really want to bet against Caleb Williams, so not itchy to go to that, but I'd rather go under than over with the Bears. We'll talk more about the 49ers in a second. With the Panthers, it just seems mean. Uh, they lost a home game, and their bye week, they get bumped up because buys matter, but their bye week is against the Chiefs. So they went from being like 11.1 point dogs to being 10.5 point underdogs, and the win probability you gain there is pretty minimal. So... Tough pull for the Panthers. That was not ideal for them. But the more important thing is that the schedule tells us when to buy teams. And the thought process here is if a team has a good early season schedule where they could win a lot of games and you like they're over, you want to bet that early on because they could get off to a really good start and take away all the value people react to what their record may be. On the flip side, if a team has a tough early season schedule, you might want to wait to bet them because the thought process should always be you want to wait as long as you can while still getting value. Because let's say you've got 10 bucks that you want to place on a futures market over a FanDuel sports book. You could take that 10 bucks and put it on the 49ers right now. But that means that, that that bankroll is locked up for a long time. You could instead invest that in the stock. I don't know, 10 bucks in the stock market won't go very far. Uh, but like you could do other stuff with that money. Keep it in your pocket until later on. And when the schedule is tough, you might not be paying that much worse of a price to bet them later on in the year. So that's kind of the thought process here is if you can wait to get a good value on a team, you should do so. I think the biggest team as far as undulations of the schedule is going to be the San Francisco 49ers because they have a brutal stretch from week seven to week 13. They were one of the biggest losers in terms of the schedule for this year, but they were losers for a couple of reasons. The big one is they face four teams coming off a of bye, which is the most in football. And the teams that they will be facing coming off their bye are the Chiefs, the Cowboys, the Seahawks, and the Bills. They have their buy in that stretch too, between week seven to 13, but like that is a brutal stretch to begin with. And it gets even worse when you add in that those four teams are coming off their buy as well. So that's a tough draw for the Niners. That does not mean I would bet they're under, but what it does mean is let's say you have interest in the 49ers. You are better suited waiting to bet them until later on because you might be able to get a better number entering week 14 when their schedule is up. They're facing a lot of tough teams, and there's a possibility they drop some of those games. If they drop those games, you might be able to get better numbers in the futures markets 
on the 49ers. It's especially true when we take a look at where they're at and we see that to win the NFC right now, the Niners are plus 250. There's a good chance that that is not the best number we can get. So to me, I think that was the biggest takeaway from the schedule release was if you want to bet the 49ers, wait, hold on to that bankroll for a bit and decide to buy into them entering week 14 after they get past that really tough schedule where they face teams like the Bills, Chiefs, Cowboys coming off of their buy. It matters a lot when you bet a team. I think with the Niners, they were the biggest takeaway of you can wait and potentially still bet them at a pretty good number during the year later on. I do like overs in the Niners, but I'll be holding off and doing so in season as opposed to doing so right now. I think the other takeaway uh, with the 49ers is that again, you can hold off and betting them until later on. I do show value on their over. So potentially consider them, but I would not do so until uh week 14 based on that schedule. Other helpful thing as far as not betting them until later is let's say, you know, maybe Brock Purdy stubs a toe and he can't play for six months. Let's just go with that. Uh, or has another elbow injury. You're safeguarded against that. You kind of get insurance because you haven't bet them. You can always say it's week 14. You know, the, the Niners have had some injuries. Maybe I don't want to invest after all. So I think there are a couple of key advantages to waiting, and we get those key advantages specific with the 49ers for this year. But just keep in the back of your brain that the Niners could be a team that does go on a surge from week 14 on. The Kansas City Chiefs are pretty similar to the 49ers, where things for them relatively are difficult towards the start of the year compared to where they are at the end. One of their tough early season game against the Niners, uh, it's coming off their bye, but it's in San Francisco. So that's a tough draw. Before that, the Chiefs get the Ravens, Bengals, Falcons, Chargers, and Saints. For them, relative to the rest of their schedule, that is pretty tough. The six easiest games for the Chiefs come from week nine on. So I could see them being similar to what they were this year, where they have a slow start followed by a big surge. That means I don't want to bet them right now. I'd be open to doing so in week eight or nine. But if you want to bet the Chiefs, it's probably better off doing so there. It's also important to note that they won't ever she rice, likely for a good chunk of that schedule. I currently have rice expected to miss the first four games. It's sounding like that might be too low uh, based on the way the winds are blowing right now with Rasheed Rice. So their schedule is tough now. Could get even tougher. The six to one win Super Bowl. Uh, Niners are plus five fifty. So I think with both those teams, if you want to bet them, I'd hold off until the middle part of the year. See how things break for them. See if there are any key injuries that dissuade you from betting them. But overall, best play for the Niners and Chiefs is to bet. Wait to bet them until their schedules lighten up. Another team with a tough early season schedule is a team we've discussed a lot here on the show in the Atlanta Falcons. If you look at the Falcons' schedule, five of their toughest, their five toughest games all come within the first 10 weeks, and they're all before their bye week. Their two most winnable games for the Falcons come in their final three weeks. So if you want to bet an under on the Falcons, I would bet that now because their schedule could be pretty tough and it might undersell how good they are. If you want an over on the Falcons, I'd wait until week 11 when they face the Saints, because that could be where things get a bit a, a bit lighter. So I still like the Saints to win the division. You've heard me say that by now plenty of times. If I want to do that, I should do so before week one, because the Falcons, I guess maybe not week one, because Falcons face uh, the, the Steelers there. That's probably a pretty winnable game, but maybe week two or just do it now. I think that's probably the way you want to play things. If you want to bet against the Falcons, I would do so now because that early season schedule is relatively tough. Yeah, the, the Saints get the Panthers week one. So if you want to bet the Saints, I would do so before week one. Another team with a tough, easy schedule is the Dallas Cowboys. They have no easy games towards the early part of their year. I know a lot of you probably have interest in betting unders on the Cowboys. If you want to do so, I would do so now. I have all four of the Cowboys' easiest games and six of their top seven easiest games coming after their bye week. And their bye week for Dallas is, I think, pretty late. Uh, the bye for Dallas comes in, oh, it's actually in week seven, but they face the Niners in week eight, and then that's when the schedule starts to get a bit lighter. After that, they face Washington twice, face the Panthers in that stretch. So 
If you want to bet an under on the Cowboys, I would do so now. And I think a lot of you probably do. Personally, I lean more towards buying into them. It's a bit skeptical of Philadelphia still. I know they've done a lot of work with that defense, brought in Vic Fangio. Still a little skeptical there with them. Um, the Cowboys have a lot of needs that they, I think, kind of addressed during the draft. So maybe I'm too rich on them, but the numbers do still like them despite their key losses. Uh, they address some big needs in the draft. So if you want a Cowboys under, I would do so now. If you want an over, I'd wait until after that Niners game in week eight, because that seems to be the best buying window on the Cowboys. Final team with a tough early season schedule is, is not one where I want to bet an under right away. It's a team that I want to monitor. And I'm not saying I want to bet an over later on either, but I want to keep close tabs on the Indianapolis Colts because their end of season schedule is really nice. The two most winnable games of the Colts are in weeks 15 and 16. I have them favored in four of their final five games. The problem is they have to endure a pretty tough stretch before that. Uh, before week 12, or in the first 12 weeks, the Colts get the Texans twice. Then they pace, face the Packers, Bills, and Lions, all teams that realistically could win the Super Bowl. So let's say the Colts go through that stretch, and they're playing pretty good football, maybe not getting a lot of wins, but keeping things close and being generally efficient on offense. That could be pretty interesting to buy into them towards the stretch run. I've got the Colts at 8.25 wins. Their win total is eight and a half, but with plus money on the over, they're at, uh, or I guess minus 104. Now to go over eight and a half wins, I'm going to wait and see. I'm very intrigued by this team overall because Anthony Richardson did show flashes. Um, I, I'm not sure what to take from that because it was such a small sample, but I would like to buy in and we might get a window to do so if they're able to play decently well and keep themselves in the playoff hunt towards the end of the year. So there's a good shot that if the, the Colts play well, but don't have an amazing record, we could find ourselves buying into them towards a stretch run. So the five teams with tough early season schedules are the Colts, Cowboys, Falcons, Chiefs, and 49ers. If you want unders on those teams, do it now. If you want overs, I'd probably hold off and do so later on during the year. There is a flip side to this, though, where there are teams with pretty easy early season schedules. And those are teams where if you want to bet their overs, it's better to do so now than wait because you might not get a better number later. And I think the biggest team that could get out to a really good start is Cincinnati Bengals. Three of their four easiest games come within the first four weeks. Those are against the Patriots, Commanders, and Panthers. They have the Chiefs in the middle, uh, but likely no Rasheed Rice in that game. So I actually have right now the Bengals with a 15% chance to start the season 4-0, which is not that bad at all. Things do get tougher after that because they face the Ravens in Week 5. They don't have another of their easier games until Week 17. But if you like the Bengals, I would bet them before the season starts, before we get confirmation that Joe Burrow is good to go, which he should be. I don't really need to see it with him. I feel pretty good about Joe Burrow right now. I'm in line with the market. With the Bengals right now, I think they're pretty interesting to potentially win the a AFC North. But in general, this is a team that you like. You want to buy into them now because that early season schedule is very favorable. They could get off to a very good start. And if they do so, you're not going to get them at relaxed prices later on. Bengals plus 170 to win the AFC North. And they are plus 700 to win the AFC. Could be pretty intriguing. So the Bengals, to me, one of the teams I'd flag is potentially getting off to a hot start this year. Other team that could start hot is the Jets. Um, they start easy and finish tough. I don't really want to buy into the Jets. I've talked about the, the betting they're under a couple of times here on the show, but then they got the bump up for the schedule where they're facing no teams coming off a bye. That's a, a plus for them. They face the Niners in week one, which is likely a loss. But after that, I have them with win probabilities of at least 60% in four straight games. And again, my, my numbers are below market on the Jets, so they'll probably be decently heavy favorites in those four games. So I do like the Jets to go under, but it might be best to fade them until in season. Maybe that's via a Bills AFC East market. Maybe that's via a Jets in-season win total, stuff like that. Uh, but it is pretty tough to buy to to fade the Jets right now because that early season schedule is pretty easy. So Jets and Bengals, two teams to buy into right now if you want to buy into them or bet unders later on in the year if you want to do so. And then 
or, or the tougher, the flip sides, tougher early season schedules belong the Colts, Cowboys, Falcons, Chiefs, and 49ers. So that's the key takeaway for me again is the schedule is just kind of identifying when to buy teams, not just what teams to bet, but when to buy into them because it is a pretty big thing when you're trying to fill out your futures, market slips. So hopefully that's helpful as far as uh, laying out the overall thought process of putting thought into when to buy into teams, but hopefully identifying teams as well. Before we close up for today, got to go back to the recommendations last week here on the show. And let's start things off on a high note by talking about Brandon Gadula, who came on here to break down the PGA Championship. Find Brandon on Twitter at Gadula13. Find him on our PGA show, The Heat Check, every Tuesday with myself uh, talking about that week's uh, best bets and DFS plays for the PGA Tour event. That's over on the FanDuel Research Podcast feed. Uh, Brandon also, of, or of course, came on the show and talked up Xander Schauffele, 14-1, to 1, and Xander got it done, led wire to wire, got hairy at times for sure, but a uh, really impressive showing by Xander, bounced back from some difficult spots, held off some key challengers and Bryson DeChambeau and Victor Hovland and Colin Morikawa. He got the job done. So cash that ticket for Brandon with Xander 14 to 1. Other outrights were Brooks Kepka 14 to 1, Joaquin Neiman 35 to 1, and Sahith Thigala at 30, 75 to 1. Thigala looked pretty good on Saturday. Couldn't quite get there on Sunday, though. But either way, a uh, good call by Brandon on Xander, but also on Bryson DeChambeau, top 10 plus 260. DeChambeau was awesome. Like, not a big DeChambeau guy. He's super annoying, but his energy was really cool. So I thought it was, he was fun to watch, even though I had the Xander ticket was actively rooting against DeChambeau. He was still fun to watch. So uh, got the ticket for Brandon plus 260 for a top 10 on Bryson. Final one was Patrick Rogers top 20. That was plus 650 at FanDuel Sportsbook. So couldn't get that one, but good call by Xander uh, or by Brandon on Xander Shoffley 14 to one and Bryson DeChambeau plus 260. More with Brandon on Tuesday on the, the heat check on the FanDuel Research podcast feed for this week's event. We have Gabriel Santiago on to preview Usyk versus Fury. You can find Gabriel on Twitter at GPS underscore on the mic. And Gabriel's favorite bet for that fight on Saturday night was Usyk to win by decision or points. And it was a split decision, but Usyk got the win. That was a plus 200 for Usyk to win by decision. Uh, Gabriel said, you know, I don't see these guys finishing this fight because both guys don't get knocked out. Could see a rhythm kind of fight, and he called it correctly. So Usyk gets the win by decision of points, plus 200. Great call by Gabriel. Follow him on Twitter at GPS underscore on the mic. We had Austin Cass on to preview the final week in the EPL. Find Austin on Twitter at Austin Cass. Check out his work over at FanDuel Research, which is also where you can find Gabriel. Austin went 2-3, and three, or 2-1, and one to close out the year. Uh, two wins, one loss. The two wins both came in the Crystal Palace match. Uh, he had Crystal Palace to win at minus 125, and he had Eberichi Eze to score assist at minus 130. And not only did Eze score, he scored twice. So that was helpful, and Crystal Palace won that match 5-0. So awesome call by Austin, getting Crystal Palace minus 125, and Eze to score assist at minus 130. Other one was Tottenham over one and a half first half goals, plus 164. Tottenham did score three times, but two of those came in the second half. So no win on that one, but overall a two and one week to close out the year for Austin Cass. Find him on Twitter at Austin Cass for me in NASCAR this weekend for the all-star race had two bets and they both finished second in their respective races. So were Bubba Wallace at plus five fifty to win the all-star open and Denny Hamlin at five to one to win the all-star main event. Bubba Wallace finished second behind Ty Gibbs Hamlin second behind Joey Logano. That was a bummer. So couldn't quite get there, but I feel like the overall like modeling and the process was good. So bummed we couldn't cash it, but I think the process was good overall. So uh, couldn't quite live up to the hype set up by other guests on the show this past week. That is all that we have here for today on Covering the Spread. Back with you once again tomorrow. As mentioned, Tom Vecchia will join us to break down his thoughts on the NBA Conference Finals, breaking down both series and the initial games in both of the series. Find that by subscribing to Covering the Spread wherever you get your podcasts. You can find me on Twitter by searching for at Jim Sonis. You can also find FanDuel Research on Twitter at FanDuel Research. Want to thank you all for tuning in for today. Good luck to you with your bets across Monday. We'll talk to you once again tomorrow to break down the N NBA Conference Finals. This has been Covering the Spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network.